Hey, what's going on guys? Coming again here. In this video, we're going to be converting the board image to FEN string. So if you're interested, without further ado, let's actually start. Okay, so here I've defined the locations to FEN function, which converts uh, the pre-stored coordinates uh, where uh, the board is occupied, by, is occupied by the pieces into the FEN strings. But before walking through the code, let me actually demonstrate how, how things work, because it's really the first uh, uh, a, bit of a, a bit of impressive step for me personally at the very least. So here we, get, here we have uh, an absolutely exact uh, board position, uh, uh, global board position and board size as defined in in the service code to so make sure that these values match if you're using a different board different setup you definitely would need to alter the values so i've been talking about this many times in the previous videos okay and now when when it comes to running the script so now you can no longer run the script like this it will tell you that you need to specify either white or black side to move and this this is very logical and the idea behind this is just to uh, properly uh, properly set the uh, side to move within the FEN string so here uh, we have white to move so we need to uh, use white as the command line argument and here we go so it makes the screenshot and then it starts detecting all the pieces on board and after at the very end it generates the fen string and here is the fen so we have exactly the fen that uh, represents the initial position but that's uh, a bit of a piece of cake right so let's try to come up with a uh, with a bit more sophisticated position let's say like this one so I just want to copy and then here creating a game I want to play with the computer from uh, from the given position and paste the position in and play with white pieces so here is the position and just for the verification purposes so here we have the original FEN that we did set up the Leachess board with. Okay, and now let's run the script to get exactly the same FEN from uh, this image recognition. Okay, so here is the FEN and... Okay, so copy and... So if, if we have a look at the position, it is absolutely the same as well as side to move. Now, now you might be wondering what's what's going on, what's going wrong with uh, castling rights and, and in peasant square and uh, uh, half move counters in regards to 50 rule move and the full move counter. Well, these are just placeholders because at the moment I have no idea how to extract those as well. So it's a, a bit of a challenging thing, but. All we need to make uh, a proof of concept move is this. So we could just uh, ignore uh, castling moves and in peasant room and, and in peasant moves. So engine is not going to be using them, uh, generating them because we don't uh, allow it to, to do so. But anyway, it, it would be possible to actually pass this sort of FEN string to the engine and make it start and make it and start it make uh, the calculations to come up with the best move within the current given position. So this is pretty it and already we can use this FEN string, the resulting FEN string that we have here to uh, feed to the engine that we will need to create, a, create an instance of using Python chess module to reference whatever you say engine and so on. But, so at the very end, let's have uh, let's have a quick look on how this locations to FEN works. So it takes the piece locations, which is literally the list uh, we have updated here in recognized positions. So we did associate the coordinates of uh, square bounds of every single piece we have, and then we do convert those coordinates to a certain. Uh, we we use those coordinates to create the FEN string. So let's quickly walk through the code. So we have uh, the, traverse, uh, the traversal of 
uh, the coordinates on the board within the for eight rows and eight columns, just like we did uh, when it was the matter of uh, piece, ext uh, piece extraction. So just like we, exactly the same stuff we've been doing here. So have a look at the first video in the series to give more uh, idea of how it works. And uh, yeah, hold on a sec. Do we really need to specify the square? Okay, so anyway, uh, we do, uh, if we have, it, not, it might not always be the exact match of the coordinates, so we're using uh, what I call uh, detection noise threshold here. So if uh, the coordinates are within the threshold, in this case, we know that there is a piece and we also loop over all the pieces available. So that's the way how we know that the piece should be appended to FEN and we do reset the uh, empty square counter and again like if we don't have any piece then we do increment empty square counter and uh by the end uh of the uh by the end of road traverse so we add the number of empty, of empty squares uh to the fen and another thing we do the same before the piece so that's how we can uh, keep track of the empty squares before the certain piece and after the certain piece. So I hope that's clear. And this is pretty it. And here at the very end, uh, we use the current, so I've added the variable called site to move. Uh, it's been uh, initialized, uh, initially it gets initialized using the sys uh, argv uh, command line parameter. So if it's black, then it, it would be equal to one, otherwise it would be equal to zero. If no parameters, that would be the error message that we already seen here. So eventually, uh, this is the way how we can uh, define the site to move. But within the main loop, when we would be making moves uh, on and on, every time we make a move, we would be changing this global site to move variable. So it would be uh, uh, altered properly within this locations to FN function. So whatever current value of site to move is, it would be generated in the next FEN after we made a move. So from now on, we can actually, uh, we can already create the engine instance, uh, initialize the board, pass the board position to the engine and uh, make it search, make insertion basically, and then the engine would kind of would come up with so-called best move uh, in UCI notation because it's the matter of UCI engines, right? And then we'll need to convert the UCI notation like square, like E2 to E4 to the certain coordinates, and not even the well uh, to the cert, to to the yeah to the certain coordinates basically. So we'll then mimic the mouse movement like say move mouse to E2, uh, E4, and then move mouse here, and move mouse, click event, move mouse, click event. So this is gonna be done using the Pyro Jira library. So in the next video, uh, we'll actually connect the engine. It, it might be whatever engine. I probably, most likely I would be using Stockfish, but you can use whatever engine you like. So in the next video, we'll come up with the best move uh, being obtained from this FEN that we would be uh, passing to the engine. And then in the video after that, we're going to be uh, creating a logic to automatically uh, convert the squares to the certain co coordinates to give, uh, to give uh, mouse pointer an idea of where to move and where to click to mimic the mouse. That's kind of it. Well, okay, guys, that's it from my side. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, and take care.